Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars and this is the fifth video in the video series Libertarianism, the new look of America. This video is entitled Four Possible Future United States Economic Regions and Trade Regions. This section has a series of maps that I have adapted to show possible United States economic regions and trade regions of the centuries that are to come. I would be interested in your comments regarding this intriguing topic of the eventual possibility that the United States government might become less centralized and more imbued with local flavor and with the strong spirit of our local communities. The first map is entitled HIV, that's the AIDS pandemic, HIV pandemic economic stressor one. One eastern economic region, including the southern states and the eastern seaboard, and it looks like this. You can see a map of the United States, a topographical map, that also shows the aridity, the rainfall, uh, states that are green are, have more rainfall, states that are yellow less, and states that are red very little rainfall. Then I've drawn a white line showing uh, a region, an economic region that includes the eastern seaboard and the southern states. These states are very much affected right now, more so than the other states by the HIV and AIDS pandemic. And my thought was that that might act as a stressor that would consolidate that group of states into an economic region. The next map is entitled HIV, that's HIV and AIDS, Pandemic Economic Stressor 2, an Eastern Seaboard Economic Region and a Southern Economic Region. Now this map encompasses the same general region as the prior map, but it's divided into two economic regions. Uh, here you see the eastern seaboard and here the southern states. There's a, there's a yellow line right here that indicates that the two have, have formed more regional consolidation. The eastern seaboard here and the southern states over here. The description for the second map is to the right of the white line the earlier eastern economic region divided by the yellow line into two smaller regions, an eastern seaboard economic region and a southern economic region. So that would be two regions with their own special uh, local flavor, their own trade agreements and, and maybe closely aligned with inter-region trade agreements. The third map is entitled Western Economic and Cultural Stressors. Northwest Economic Region and California Central Valley Economic Region. So this map deals with the West Coast. All right, here's the same image of the United States. Uh, on the other side of the United States, we have uh, Northwest region and a California Central Valley region. Can you see those white lines there? Two separate economic regions. The description says, along the Pacific Coast, two regions de delineated by white lines to the north is the Northwest economic region, including the parts of Washington State and Oregon with good rainfall. To the south is the California Central Valley economic region, also with good rainfall. The credits for these maps will be at the end of this video. Okay, here is an interesting map entitled Jade Helm Stressors, a Utah, Colorado trade region, a Texas trade region, a Mexican trade corridor, and a Florida Caribbean trade corridor. And it looks like this. You can see the same map with 
economic regions highlighted as either yellow or white. Can you see them okay? And I'm about to describe them. The description of this map is circled in yellow are two possible regions that might secede from the Union but with which reciprocal trade agreements might be negotiated. Topmost is a Utah-Colorado trade region which might be divided into two separate areas based on dominant religion. Here we have that region here, Utah-Colorado trade region. In Utah, the Mormon faith is very strong and in Colorado, the Christian faith is very strong. And so I thought that those two areas of this economic region might pull separately apart, possibly along religious lines. Now to continue with the description, lower and to the right is a Texas trade region comprising what is now Eastern Central and Northern Texas. That is this region here, much of Texas. Then there are two Southern regions delineated in white. These are regions that might lean favorably towards alliance with Mexico, but with which we might anticipate establishing reciprocal trade agreements. And so here we have Florida, most of Florida, and then we have uh, the lower lands of the western United States that are, that are just above Mexico. You'll see it here. Florida, and then the, this is Mexico down here, and these are the lower lands of the United States that might, along with Florida, form economic regions that are in favor of trade with Mexico. The next map is entitled Southwestern Arid Region, Small Town and Native American Reservation Citadels. This is an interesting one because this area of the country is very, very arid. You can tell that by the color. And I've, I've cordoned off this entire arid zone as an area where Native Americans may establish reservation citadels or city towns that might act as trading posts for the area, for instance, and, uh, and that I consider that they would become more like city-states if transportation slows down in the United States and especially in that area over the centuries. I have here for you the description. Circled in white is the large southwestern arid region which might move to more local forms of small town government, as well as continuing with Native American reservation governments should the nation become less centralized. These include the Great Basin, the Great Rocky Mountains, and the western portion of the Great Plains. Here's a map entitled Central Breadbasket Economic Region. On this map, the area in question is rather green. There's some yellow, so that's a little more arid land. And uh, it's the United States to the west and to the south of the Great Lakes. So it's the area to the west and the south of the Great Lakes includes most of the Mississippi Valley as well and it looks like this. I don't know if you can see this green line. These are the Great Lakes up here and you see this area is mostly green with a little yellow and then there's this green line that delineates this economic region. Can you see it? The description is Circled in green is a central breadbasket economic region with plentiful rainfall and good river transportation. 
This includes the eastern portion of the Great Plains, as well as the area south of the Great Lakes, west of the Appalachians, and north of the southernmost states. So we can anticipate that if this continues to be a breadbasket area, uh, it could provide food for other economic regions in the United States, and so therefore we would need to maintain some form of transportation to the south and to the east. And the question would be whether transportation might be maintained across that vast arid expanse uh, to the west of there, or whether the western seaboard would need to um, grow its own foodstuffs as transportation became less uh, prevalent. Well, here's the last section. It's an interesting section entitled Possible Future Capital Cities of the United States. You know right now the capital is Washington, D.C. So I have here for you three possibilities labeled 0, 1, and 2. The first is Washington, D.C., numbered 0, because that's where we are right now with the capital of the United States. Next is Lancaster, numbered 1, and the, the final one is St. Louis, Missouri, labeled 2. All right, it looks like this. You can see 0, the Washington, D.C. capital of today. 1, Lancaster, near there but a little to the north. And, oh my gosh, 2, here we are, St. Louis, right smack in the middle of the bread basket. So nobody in Congress would get hungry. Just kidding. The description of this uh, map is, the current capital of the United States is Washington, D.C., numbered zero on the map. Because of the AIDS crisis in Washington, D.C., and because our nation's capital was once Lancaster, Pennsylvania, long ago, I suggest eventual relocation of the capital back to Lancaster, numbered one on the map. Imagine that, a national capital in the state of Pennsylvania. Farther out in time, it may be that St. Louis, Missouri, Nabal two on the map, would prove a good location for our nation's capital. That's because it's more centralized and it might pull the other regions together. So, looking at that map one more time, we have Washington, D.C., Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and then St. Louis, Missouri. That's the end of this fifth video in the series entitled Part 4, Possible Future, United States Economic Regions and Trade Regions. Coming up next is Part 5. Regional Pacts now in place, and we'll be discussing that in the next video. God bless you all, and keep you safe, and be with you through all your days.